LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off. What a beautiful view of Falcon 9 as it successfully lifts off from pad 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base, carrying our stack of 51 Starlink satellites to orbit. Now, moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure on the engines, and that is coming up in just about 10 seconds Vehicle here. Supersonic. Max Q. We did just pass through Max Q, and in a minute we will have three events happening in back to back in rapid succession. And that's main engine cutoff or Miko, stage separation, and second engine startup one. Now, first main engine cutoff or Miko. This is where all nine M1D engines will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. Where the, engine chill started. where the first and second stage uh, will separate with the first stage making its way back down to Earth for landing and the second stage continuing on its journey to the third event or second engine startup one. And this is where the MVAC engine lights up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. We're about 30 seconds from main engine cutoff, and you can see that beautiful plume of the rocket as it is soaring in the sky. Miko. <laughs> you can see the light from the engine. <laughs> the light from that first stage engine cutoff. MVAC ignition confirmed. From main engine cutoff, you saw the successful stage separation, and the second stage engine has started up from those live views on your right there. That Aaron is. separation confirmed. Merlin vacuum engine, and here we are waiting for fairing separation. <laughs> you can see that great view of the two fairing halves separating from the Starlink satellites. Today's flight marks the 24th time SpaceX has reflown the Falcon fairing halves since November of 2019. And again, this was our second flight for one of the fairing halves and a third for the other half. And we'll be attempting to recover the halves again today using our recovery vessel, NRC Quest, which previously supported Dragon recovery missions. You can see stage two here uh, with the MVAC engine 
lit up and carrying our Starlink payload to orbit. And with the stage two headed towards its targeted drop off orbit, stage one will be executing two burns in order to make its way back down to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite, and this helps to slow the stage down as it re enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Space Force Base, Slick 4E, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's second stage as it delivers our Starlink payload to orbit. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Both stage one and stage two are on nominal trajectories right now with stage one is cruising back to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, sorry. As a reminder, today's mission marks the 10th flight for this particular booster, the second flight for one fairing half and the third flight for the other half. Reusability is critical to what we do at SpaceX. It allows us to re refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space access. Now the stage one entry burn should be coming up here in a little under a minute, and this will be a 20 second burn of that first stage. Some of you may know that Falcon 9 is named after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, and the number nine indicates the number of Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent, and the MVAC engine, or Merlin vacuum engine that you see on your screen right now, is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage one entry burn startup. What a cool view on your left of the stage one entry burn startup there. This is a 20 second burn of three of the Merlin 1D engines of the first stage. Stage one entry burn shutdown. We did Both have vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. We did stage have one FTS is saved. We did have a successful stage one entry burn, and you can see those super cool live views from the stage one there as it is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. We can't quite make it out from those stage one views, but there is a lot of soot on that first stage of the booster. And that is because the rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 that is used as a fuel in Falcon 9 is carbon based. And when it burns, it generates that stage soot. One transonic. And then as the booster approaches its landing site during descent, it does this long re-entry burn, which we just saw that slows it down uh, prior to re-entering the atmosphere. And, while it, and when it re-enters uh, with its engines first, the booster actually flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket. Now, stage one landing burn should be starting here very stage shortly. Stage one landing burn. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn has just started. That is our drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful view. Stage one landing confirmed. 
of stage one, having landed on our drone ship for the 10th time. This marks our 90th overall successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage and the 124th successful launch of a Falcon 9. Confirm that deployment. And now these satellites will begin to slowly separate from the second stage. They actually have already separated and over the course of the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their operational orbit. And with that, that brings today's webcast to a close. Thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers for using our beta service at this time. If you're interested in being a part of our beta program, head over to starlink.com and sign up. Hope you enjoyed the webcast today as always, and we'll see you soon.